Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. And boy, do I have a lot of excuses for you today. First off, I needed to uh, put together a camera hold, a uh, gimbal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, one that I can hook up to the ceiling above. Uh, there's floor joists there. It's all open in my uh, basement. And I want to be able to hold steady in a particular position. So I put this together. And this is what I'm actually going to be filming uh, this video for because I really wanted to get as much detail on this particular part here uh, to show you uh, the process. I've never done this before, so I at least wanted it for my own records. And excuse number two. Uh, the government is in, here in Canada is giving out uh, compensation to businesses that have lost business due to uh, the virus issues. And uh, to avoid uh, system crashes and everything, they've doled it out in uh, basically by whatever your um, birth uh, month or whatever. And yesterday was the day that I could apply. So I was online uh, setting all that up, and that did take a little bit of time. But I think excuse number three kind of covers it. It's kind of weird. Uh, I find even though I have so much more time now, I simply just don't get as much done as I do when I work 60 hours a week. I think I'm really getting lazy. I, I really do. I just, I, I astound myself in the sense that I used to be able to juggle so many things and now I'm only juggling <laughs> making videos and a few other simple things and I'm just simply not getting everything done that I want to do. It's just bizarre. Anyway, enough of me rambling on. It's time to turn this down. And a number of people pointed out that, uh, and rightfully so, that there would probably be a fair amount of friction between the arbor here and uh, the pieces of acrylic. I left a fair amount of space, uh, and I also, um, as you saw, I use, I'm using the same lubricant that I use on the ways for the lathe. It is extremely viscous, and I don't think I've ever met or touched anything slipperier because it has to work under extreme pressures and it actually works really really well so I thought that would be the best lubricant for this but I have never done this before uh, so what I did first off what we're doing here right now is I turned it on and I just let it run for I don't know 30 40 seconds and then turned it off and then uh, put my hand on it to see if it was even remotely warm and you'll notice as I go through this video Every time I turn off the lathe, I uh, put my hand on this joint here, and you'll see I'll, I'll start giving you a thumbs up or whatever as to whether or not it's warming up. And as a spoiler, uh, I took probably about an hour or a little bit more to turn this down to the right diameter, and it never warmed up. It never even got to the point where it felt... Um, not cool to the touch. I think that's, I think that makes sense. It always felt cooler uh, to my hand than my hand. So it never even got up to body temperature, which is, I think, cool. And I think the reason for that is, even though this is acrylic and there is friction, even though I mean, the lubricant's good and everything, but I think uh, because uh, the arbor is um, spreading out all that force so much that it just never gets a chance to build up enough friction. Because a couple of commenters mentioned that the other thing I could do, and something I didn't want to do, but I, I knew it was the only other option, would be to turn down a piece of, uh, well, someone mentioned wood. Uh, my option would have been for a piece of metal, possibly aluminum. Uh, most likely it would have to have been brass. And create a solid core for the tube so that it would be you know, it would support all the way along. Fortunately, I didn't have to do that uh, because I think it would have been really difficult. I mean, extruded acrylic is not uh, even. It's It does have variations in it. And if I were to try and put a solid core through this whole thing, it would probably be a very, be a very tight fit and getting it out afterwards uh, would probably have been an issue. So fortunately, like I said, that didn't come up. So uh, we're good for that. The other thing I noticed as I was doing this is I was extremely cautious turning this down. 
It's taken a long time to get to this point, uh, a lot of hours, and I didn't want to end up messing this up. Originally I uh, told you, that was the last video for this, that uh, I'm going to turn it down to a larger diameter tube first, and uh, just, uh, again, just in case I mess up. And then also, at this point here, if I break off a chunk of one of these teeth, uh, it's going to be really difficult to... Uh, smooth it out afterwards so I am taking off five thousandths of an inch uh, from the radius every time I do one of these passes and that's just a pass towards the right this pass here I'm not taking anything off just it just smooths out uh, little bits and pieces that come off and like I said this took over an hour. It was uh, I was stood there for over an hour doing this. It wasn't you know technically for machining purposes or time frames or whatever. It's not really that long, but uh, it's a lot longer than I would want if I was trying to you know make these for any kind of use other than just me trying it out. So yeah, it was uh, it was like I said a lot of work going into this, and it's not something I don't think I would have ever even bothered trying to do if it wasn't for the fact that I have a lot of you know, time, even though I'm not managing it well at all. So here you, you can start seeing now, uh, if you watched right near the middle, you'll see as these pieces pass by, all of the teeth now are being uh, reduced. And originally, uh, because these are cut on a table saw, I mean, a table saw is fairly accurate, but it's not to the hundredth of an inch. So it does take time to get it to the point where uh, all the teeth are being reduced at the same time. So now the purpose is to get these so that there's no gap where you can see there's still as the teeth near the, if you look near the top, you can see there's still a bit of a V as they pass by. Uh, that has to go away. It has to be completely smooth. And of course also I have to turn it down to the inside diameter of uh, the piece of tubing I'm using. Now, if this works out really well, uh, which I'm hoping it will, uh, there is one other small hiccup, and that is that piece of tubing I have, uh, the one that I'm going to be initially hooking this up for, and <laughs> we'll try and get it done for Friday, barring any other sorts of weird things in the world. Uh, it is the only piece of that size I have, and it is only six inches long. So I'm not sure what's going to happen going forward, because there is absolutely nowhere I can get acrylic right now. Everything's shut down. It's just the way it is. So what I'm going to do is I am going to try and hook up something interesting for you guys for Friday. And then I'm going to, uh, if I have the, <laughs> I'm going to say if I have the time, because I have the time. If I end up with the ambition and motivation to uh, do some extra stuff, what I'm going to do is I will hook up alternate versions of an Archimedes screw, at least one anyway. Uh, if... If this, for some reason, uh, isn't long enough to give you a good visual on it. There's no reason for it not to work. Uh, right now, I'm just jinx myself. Uh, but you never know when you put these things together. Because one of the things that an Archimedes screw needs, first off, is an angle. It can't be vertical. It has to be like 45 degrees or uh, something like that. I don't think it actually really matters a whole lot. But... Uh, if you consider that, there's, uh, I can't really have more than about half of this in the water, uh, maybe even only a third, uh, so it may not pump a lot of water, but we'll see. And like I said, I'm going to try and put together at least a um, simple version, like with a hose and a piece of pipe and that as well. Again, I will do my best. Um, and hopefully that will all uh, come through, but we'll see. So we're getting close now. And as I got close, I changed uh, how I was removing material. I wanted to, to have a smooth outer f uh, feel to it. So at this point, you can see I'm moving the, uh, sli uh, the, the, the carriage a lot faster, but I'm only taking off half a thousandth of an inch per pass. So it is... Um, going to smooth out that feel, that surface to it, because I don't want any friction on the inside of this. 
And normally when I do a lot of these sorts of things, I will have a very tight fit to uh, the inside of the pipe, but not this time. It's going to be relatively loose. I'm going to try and go for uh, probably about a hundredth of an inch free play. Uh, I'm going to have to adjust that, of course, as we go along because I have to build a housing for the bottom and a housing for the top and, of course, have it so this can turn freely in that. And then, you know, uh, that may take adjusting and stuff, but that's fine because this can easily just go right back on here and I can make adjustments. So that's pretty much all the turning. And now it's just a simple matter of making sure that the tube that's going to fit in uh, does fit. And then uh, I'm going to show you a close-up of it. And my apologies again, uh, but this is as far as I can get for Wednesday. This is, uh, this video is, this is pretty much it. So this is the tube that's going to go in and it fits nicely. I've got that nice gap and as you can see as it goes along here it's the inside of extruded acrylic especially these larger diameters is uh, variable and you can see it kind of bounces a bit. Uh, that's another reason why I had to go with a, a slightly less uh, tight fit. But there you go. And you can see how it's going to spin and like I said it should work quite well. So I'm gonna, like I said I'm going to give you a little uh, bit more of a close-up and uh, show you how it looks. Uh, let me know, of course, uh, in the comments below what you think of this. And Friday, I will have this up and running for you, fingers crossed. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And always leave your comments. I really enjoy that. I mean, uh, you guys have some really cool ideas. And there's actually uh, one of my next builds coming up is going to come from one of those. Uh, so definitely uh, leave all that sorts of stuff. <laughs> If any of you guys played with uh, those spirographs when you were a kid where you put a pencil in a piece of uh, uh, acrylic or plastic or whatever and it moved in a, a bit of a gear system on the inside, looking down that is what it, that reminded me of. So again, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video and bye for now.